Welcome to the Dentamax Tip of the Week. Today we're going to talk about <clears throat> these two buttons on the side in your ledger screen, the Adjust Deductible button and the Adjust Benefits Used button. How these buttons are applicable uh, in your ledger screen, how you would use them. Let's go ahead and talk about the Adjust Deductible button. Uh, but before I do that, uh, let's go ahead and jump on over to our insurance details for Delta Dental of Arizona. So we'll go ahead and click, just click on it, and we'll look at the coverage table. <clears throat> when you set up your insurance for the very first time, um, you need to select if there is a deductible and what kind of deductible you have. In this case, for Delta Dental of Arizona, we have a standard deductible uh, for this individual, for the individuals uh, with this plan without a family uh, deductible and there is no preventative deductibles. Okay, So the only deductible on this plan is a per person individual deductible of $50. Okay, Also, you're um, required to set up a max. In this case, it's $1,000. That's the maximum amount of benefit the insurance will pay out for this patient. Now, <clears throat> knowing this information, if I were to come into the practice and have a root canal, um, it would be an, an odontic type of procedure paid out by Delta Dental at 80%. Okay. Now, if I met my deductible or not, that determines what the patient portion is and what the insurance portion is. And so where this comes into play, if I have already seen a dentist before, and maybe I just moved into the community, I'm going to your office for the very first time, and I've already met my deductible, then um, I'd pay a less amount of money. Um, Whereas if I hadn't met my deductible first, I'd have to pay that and then calculate uh, my portion off the remaining amount. Let me show you what I mean. We'll go ahead and close down the screen. And so right now, um, I had a root canal that was performed. Um, that root canal totaled $597. Okay. In this case, uh, the Denimax is showing that the deductible has not yet been met. So looking here at the top of the screen, we'll see standard deductible. As you can see, we set up just the one uh, for the individual which hasn't been met. The $50 deductible, zero of that amount has been met. And so, looking at our coverage table that we were just at, uh, the insurance be, would be paying for 80% of this after the deductible was met. So, it'd be uh, $597, $50 was uh, a deductible by the patient. Okay, of that, uh, remaining amount of $547. 80% would be paid by the insurance, and 20% would be paid by the patient. So 80% would be $437.60 by the insurance, and then 20% after the deductible is paid would be paid by the patient. Well, this is important because maybe I already had seen a, a, um, a dentist where I previously lived and had met my deductible. Well, that's where this button comes into play. You would click on the Adjust Deductible button here on your left-hand side, and simply put in, okay, the standard had been met at $50. Go ahead and we'll post that over. As you will see, that $50 now is reflected over here on the right-hand side, showing that my individual standard deductible has been met. What does that do over to here? Well, it changes what the patient owes, what the insurance owes. Now the patient doesn't have to pay a $50 deductible and then 20% of the uh, root canal. Um, the $50 deductible gets moved from being, respons re being responsible by the patient up to the insurance portion. Okay, I hope that's been helpful there. Now, let's move on to the uh, adjust benefits used. Um, <clears throat> maybe before I moved into town, um, I went to the dental office and at my where I previously lived and I'd used some of my benefits. Okay, so <clears throat> since that patient's moved to Mesa, Arizona and come into our practice, um, we uh, you know, reflect all of that information. Um, so, as the office manager, if I were to call the insurance, they could relay that information to me, what benefits had previously previously been used by that patient before they moved to my practice. Okay? And so, if they've used part of that, you'd want to go ahead and adjust the benefits used. So, we'll go ahead and click on adjust benefits used, and let's say they just used $100. Go ahead and type that in. $100. We'll go ahead and post. Okay? When I click on post, it's going to change this left-hand side right here. On the right-hand side, we got an insurance max of $1,000, and of that, we received $56 in payments, okay, from the insurance comp uh, 
yeah, from the insurance company. So you can see that if you add up forty-eight dollars at eight dollars, that comes up to be fifty-six dollars. The um, root canal has not yet been paid by the insurance company, so we're anticipating to receive four hundred seventy-eight dollars for that root canal. Okay, so if you add fifty-six plus four seventy-eight, we have we've used five hundred six dollars in our practice. <clears throat> we'll go ahead and add a hundred dollars that was used before the patient moved to our practice, and that will be applied to this left-hand side. Again, this is the uh, amount that has been paid for sure on the right hand side that's still the 478 is waiting to be paid by the insurance. Not only can you see this information from this screen, okay, you can also see it from your charting screen. So let's go ahead and we'll click on view chart here on the left hand side and then down to the bottom left hand corner of your charting screen if you click on show insurance benefits it will display the insurance benefits here at the top. Okay? Uh, we have no secondary insurance in this case, we just have primary from Delta Dental of Arizona. And here it will show what the max is. And then here, here's your little formula. Used for sure, what we've been paid on so far, would be the 156. Okay, we were paid 56, and then they had actually used $100 in the previous practice. And then insurance pending was the 478. And so we can see we have not yet exceeded the $1,000 max for this patient. This is beneficial right here because perhaps your next patient hasn't showed up. Maybe you have a patient sedated and you want to proceed working on them, um, you can see that there's insurance left that patient's plan, so you maybe could proceed. Um, so I hope this has been beneficial in showing up how to make these financial adjustments in the software uh, to help you more accurately determine what the patient portion is so you can collect it from the point of service when you're working with your patients. Uh, this uh, has been the tip of the week, and we look forward to next week.